The world is getting smaller as the flights get longer, but only one can be the longest, and this is it. Welcome on board the world's longest commercial flight. Join us for more than 10,000 miles in the sky from New York to Singapore. Hello, Jet Setters. I'm Jeb Brooks from GreenerGrass.com. This is the world's longest flight, and you're coming along. Because New York and Singapore are about as far apart as any two points on the planet, depending on the winds, this flight can travel over the North Pole, which is what I did the first time I took it. We can fly westbound over the Pacific Ocean or eastbound over Europe, and that's the path we'll be on tonight, covering some 10,603 miles. Well, what do you do to prepare for this marathon flight, the longest in the world? Well, we checked into a day room here at the TWA Hotel. That was so that we could take a nap head to the gym, get a shower, and get caffeinated before this epic adventure. Ordinarily, a stay at the TWA hotel would necessitate a visit to their rooftop for some plane spotting, but the weather gods had something else for us in mind. Looking a little foggy out there today. I think we're gonna head inside and uh, head over to check-in. One stop on the air train got us where we needed to be. Singapore Airlines operates out of Terminal 4 here at JFK. There are two flights a day, actually, one to Frankfurt, one, the one we're on, to Singapore. Let's go get checked in and get this trip started. The flight to Frankfurt, which continues on to Singapore, is operated by a 777 with four classes of service. But our flight, on a special A350, only has business class and premium economy. Well, that was super fast and very easy. Now uh, let's get through security and head off to the lounge. Singapore Airlines is one of those rare international carriers that takes advantage of TSA pre-checks. So security took no time at all. And here we are in T4 proper. Here it is, the five-year-old A350-900 ULR that'll carry us all the way through to Singapore tonight. This has been off and on the world's longest flight, going back as far as 2004 when it was operated by an all business class A340-500. But when fuel prices went up, that service ended in 2013. It began again on the A350-900 ULR on October 11th, 2018, and I was lucky enough to be on board the re-inaugural flight out of Newark. I'll link to that video in the description below. Singapore Airlines added service from JFK in 2020, and that's a few miles longer than Newark, making this the world's longest scheduled commercial flight. As flights get longer, what's your dream non-stop long-haul route? What cities would you like to see connected, and what airplane do you want to do it? Let us know in the comments below. We got my ticket with Miles, it was the last one left. And we used uh, cash for my ticket, and we'll let you know exactly what we paid and how we booked both of them a little later in the video. When you're flying distances this long, it's always a trade-off between passengers and fuel. That's why the plane we're on tonight only has 161 seats. Singapore Airlines' other A350-900s have about 300 seats on them, so we're traveling light today on passengers, but heavy on fuel. Unfortunately, Singapore Airlines does not operate a lounge here at JFK, so instead, business class passengers like us get to choose between the Prime Class Lounge or the Air India Lounge. So we decided we want to check out Air India, so let's head that way. Well, we went up there to the Air India Lounge and there was nobody at the, uh, at the desk there. We waited for about five or six minutes and just decided to call it and come back down here and walk around the terminal a bit. As a Maryland native, I'm confused. We finally decided to check out the brand new Chase Lounge, which we could access thanks to our Chase Sapphire Reserve credit cards. This would really be a better place for Singapore Airlines to send their business class passengers, but more on that in a bit. There's table service and a buffet a bar with signature cocktails, and great views including of our airplane as ramp workers moved it from one gate to another. Then we headed next door to the American Express Centurion Lounge, which we entered thanks to our American Express cards. I love a good lounge hop. This too was a far nicer lounge experience than Singapore offers. We even spotted that Frankfurt flight pushing. So uh, what's the job score for these lounges? <laughs> Five stars for both of them. Yeah, but we don't get to count the job score for these lounges because our ticket did not provide access. That's true. We got it. We're going to Air India now. Well, that was a swing and a miss. Um, they just closed apparently every night at nine. And our boarding wasn't for nearly another hour. All the Singapore Airlines passengers who'd been in the Air India lounge got kicked out and were sent over to prime class. But they weren't allowed to enter there because the Singapore Airlines business class ticket only gets you one lounge entrance. Fortunately for us, since we never got into Air India, we were allowed in here. But truthfully, the passengers who were turned away didn't miss much. Access to a lounge is an important part of a long-haul international business class flight, and not having access for the last hour before boarding was too bad. But the Prime Class Lounge left a lot to be desired. There are not even any bathrooms in here, let alone views, so we headed back outside ourselves. 
So our flight time tonight is around 18 hours. What can you do with that much time? Well, you can listen to the Taylor Swift album, 1989 Taylor's version, of course, about 14 times. <laughs> Or you could watch that great Singapore-based film, Crazy Rich Asians, nine times. Or you could watch 49 episodes of Friends. Seinfeld. And I know what you're thinking, like, okay, 18 hours in business class, how bad could it be? But just thinking about that much time on a plane, no matter where you're sitting, it's pretty intimidating. But I'm excited. That much time doing anything is intimidating. I don't care what it is, 18 hours of anything. But, uh, you know, there's plenty of plenty of things to do to pass the time. There'll be movies to watch and mm -hmm. food to eat and drinks to drink and scenery to see. And we're going to share it all with you. Boarding began right on time, and despite our excitement for this occasion, it was strange seeing just how routine this was. Well, here it is, the longest flight in the world. Let's board this bird. I was booked into seat 23K and Suzanne was sitting right in front of me in 22K. We're in the larger business class cabin, but there's a smaller one up front and that's the one I'd recommend. It was full when we selected our seats. Now, the seats themselves offer all the bells and whistles you'd expect from a business class seat, but the footrest is awkwardly placed off to the side. Singapore Airlines is in the process of upgrading these cabins. Shortly after sitting down, a flight attendant brought around a very, very hot towel. Flight time is evening, approximately 18 hours and 15 minutes, 18.5. The flight is available on the Type Up channel of your in flight entertainment system. Have a pleasant flight and thank you for choosing Singapore Airlines. We were surprised by how routine this all seemed. I mean, this is a momentous journey by any measure. However, when you put it in context, I guess it's not really all that strange. I mean, the list of the longest flights in the world is extensive and changes a lot with new city pairs being added regularly. And there may not have been much fanfare out there, but there was plenty in my mind. As we made our way out to the runway, my anticipation was building. This is truly one of the greatest miracles of the modern age. The fact that these machines can link two of the furthest points on planet Earth in a matter of hours just boggles my mind. And the flights are only getting longer. Qantas promises to link New York with Sydney, which could top off at 22 hours long. But the question remains, how are we going to feel after all this is said and done? Well, let's get in the sky and find out. Once we were in the air, I was finally ready to settle in. Now, the seat is a bit awkward with the footwell being off and to the side, but more about that when we're in bed mode. As a long-haul airline, Singapore's in-flight entertainment has to be great, and thankfully, it is. There's even live TV, and plenty of options, and of course, there's a really solid map feature. Unfortunately, it's not a touchscreen, which means you have to use this remote, and unfortunately, it's really difficult to use. Free Wi-Fi is available to everyone on board as long as you're a member of the Singapore Frequent Flyer program, and it worked really well for the entire journey. Passengers have noise-canceling headphones to borrow during the flight, and the seats are, as you'd expect, adjustable. A mere 20 minutes after takeoff, service began with warm nuts. The first course was the Hudson Valley Hot Smoke Trout and Aero Farm Salad. It was nice and a light way to begin this long flight. Singapore Airlines offers an industry-leading pre-order feature they call Book the Cook. Suzanne and I both took advantage of this for our first meal. I chose the veal cutlet and she opted for the chicken rice. My veal was really tasty, but something with this much butter is bound to be exquisite. The chicken rice was light, comforting, and served as a great introduction to Singaporean cuisine. For dessert, Suzanne had a caramel brownie with a pistachio cream and a cup of chamomile tea, in the hope that it would put her to sleep. And about an hour and 40 minutes into the trip, we asked the flight attendant to turn my seat into a bed, and I went into the lavatory, which was stocked with plenty of amenities. Now these beds are extremely wide at your shoulders and Singapore Airlines providing three pillows is industry leading. On US carriers, you're often given just one. The mattress topper they provide adds even more cushion and comfort. This really is a great bed with just one caveat. 
well, my uh, seat is now in bed mode, and uh, look, it's it's uh, a little bit awkward compared to other business class seats uh, with this uh, twist over to the to the right with my feet. Um, but I'm a side sleeper, so I'm gonna have a pretty good night's sleep here. I'm I'm pretty confident of that. But if you sleep on your back or your front, this is a little bit challenging. This is an unusual flight in so many ways. Nearly everyone tackles it in their own way. Some people went straight to sleep after takeoff, others didn't sleep at all, and still others were up and down. There's no right way to do it. Well, that's about uh, four hours of really good sleep. We've still got, well, I don't even know how much time we have left. Uh, thankfully, we're so fortunate to be in this seat, which is incredibly roomy. Good night of sleep. I guess maybe they're about to serve the second meal here in a little bit. And about 10 hours into the trip, that's exactly what they did. This hot towel, not quite as hot as the last one, was a subtle way to start this mid-flight service as the lights slowly came up in the cabin. This time, we started with a salad, tuna. I'd booked the cook again, thinking a burger would be a nice option. So I'm really not sure what this is. Is it breakfast? Is it lunch? Is it dinner? Who knows? But, uh, you know, garlic bread and, uh, and a glass of uh, Shiraz is uh, one way to celebrate the middle, or a little bit, I guess, you know, is one way to celebrate however much time we have left in flight. I don't even know. And this is what we call cheesy goodness. I mean, a burger on a plane? Come on, like, does it get better than this? I don't think so. You don't have to book the cook here on Singapore Airlines. It's also possible to order straight from this menu, which is what Suzanne did, choosing the lamb chops she found them to be well-prepared and tender. She followed that up with some fruit. Time truly disappears in situations like this. Of course, the best practice is to do your best to adjust to the time where you're heading, but that's tough given the schedule, leaving New York late at night and arriving early in the morning in Singapore. I think next time, I'll book the flight from Newark, which is a little shorter, but leaves the US in the morning and arrives at night into Singapore. We're about 12 hours in, and boy, this flight is a wild, it's a wild experience. We took off from New York, had a meal, slept some, just had another meal, and it's 11 p.m. in Singapore now. So I feel like I'm gonna be really, really out of it when we get there, but I'm gonna try to take another nap before then. This is a pretty comfy bed, for me at least. And me too. But soon I was up again to explore the cabin a little. As I mentioned earlier, this airplane is only equipped with business class and premium economy seats. Now, the premium economy cabin is arranged in a 2-4-2 configuration, but if you're a solo traveler, be sure to seek out the last three rows of window seats as they're individual seats with extra storage. Singapore Airlines offers amenity kits on demand. As you can see, this one has the basics in it, but again, the lavatories are equipped with what you really need. Slippers are also available, but no pajamas are on board. The airline also offers a menu of snacks, which are available at any time during the flight. Suzanne was feeling pretty hungry a couple of hours before landing, so she asked for the pizza, which unfortunately was a little disappointing. Gentlemen, voice and girls, this is your pilot speaking. See the first officer of here. In a few moments, we shall be commencing our descent to Singapore. As we finally near Singapore, it's time for the Jeb score. Let's rate the lounge, the seat, the food, the in-flight entertainment, and the service. First, the lounge experience is disappointing. I hope with the addition of Chase and Centurion lounges in T4, maybe there's a chance Singapore can negotiate something else. Uh, first class passengers in that Frankfurt flight get to use the Virgin Clubhouse. But business class, well, it's just rough. Uh, two stars here. The seat is a bit awkward with that turn, but as a side sleeper, it was great for me. The airline is in the process of renovating these seats, and I'm excited to see what they're going to look like. But the seat earns four stars. The food was really good. There's no perfect way to time the delivery, but I was happy with what I got and was never hungry. The opportunity to book the cook is a real, re real treat, too. But that pizza was a disappointment. It just didn't match the level of what the other meals offered. Four stars here. The IFE is solid. Free internet should be a standard across the industry, particularly on long-haul flights. And there were plenty of options, including first-run movies. However, it's not a touchscreen, and that finicky remote was, well, not a great experience either. 
This all means four stars here. The service was exactly what I've come to expect from Singapore. The flight attendants are some of the best in the sky. They're warm and kind and so very well trained. Five stars to them. Now, what did we pay? Well, I paid cash for my ticket, but it was a multi-city ticket through Bangkok, so it's kind of irrelevant. For a more fair idea, at the time we made this video, the lowest price one-way ticket on JFK to Singapore is about 2,230 US dollars in premium economy, or $3,375 in business class. Once again, we tend to book one-way tickets as a way to feature more airlines on this channel. Most people would book a round-trip ticket. Now, we transferred Amex points to Singapore's Chris Flyer program for Suzanne's ticket, and that cost 143,500 points for business class. Now, back to the Jeb score. This flight, the longest in the world, earns 19 out of a possible 25 stars. We made it. After 18 hours and 9 minutes, wheels up to wheels down. Longest flight of our lives. What an incredible experience. What a, what a miracle this thing is that we walked into that door in New York and then walked out of the same door here in Singapore uh, 10,000 miles later. Modern aviation is incredible. Between now and the next time. See you in the sky. So tonight's flight will be the longest of my life. Jeb, is it your longest? It is not. Uh, this is actually, uh, no, it is. It is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now, there's no way around it. Uh, anytime you've got a business class seat where you've got to sort of fold multiple, uh, uh, I'm not gonna go, that's two in the weeds. 12 hours in, about six more to go. All I can say is, are we there yet? It's about 11 p.m. in Singapore, so I'm gonna try to catch some sleep before we arrive around six in the morning, which is 5 p.m. in New York, is that right? Yeah, it is right. It's right. Seven. 7 p.m. 7 p.m.? I think it's 5. I think you subtract 1. <laughs> now we gotta wait for that. All areas within the terminal building are designated as smoke We look really pale. Thank you for your cooperation. <laughs>